Welcome. We are about getting ready for our upcoming fall auction at Santa Monica Auctions. We put the word out about four months ago that we are planning to do an auction on Sunday the 7th of November and we were inundated with some really good unusual work that we're quite proud of. We're very excited about things that we've pulled together and I'll walk through some of them with you. We have this outsider surrealist painting by one of the Mexican muralists and heroes lately, uh, Dr. Lacra. Very impressed by the strength and the humor of this piece. One of our local heroes and a friend who's uh, an amazing artist from Venice is Larry Bell and we were able to acquire this piece for the auction. It's from 2007 and it's one of his vapor drawings which are really sought after but this one is a little special because it's on canvas not on paper and it's unstretched canvas in this auction, talking about local heroes, we were really lucky to get some amazing early and really strong works by Ed Roche. This particular one, which is a takeoff on England and Los Angeles from 1999, is incredibly funny and uh, a very strong work. But I'll show you one of our works that I'm really proud of. Come with me. Another print by Ed Roche that I'm really incredibly happy to have is one of his iconic pieces that originally sold for $100 as a fundraiser and the people would take it and pin it on the wall and they were mainly destroyed or left in the sun. But this one was framed immediately so our version of Made in California from 1971 is, well, it's the most pristine piece I have ever seen. And right above the uh, Roche Made in California is our David Hockney etching from 1983, which is very whimsical and is uh, considered one of the great pool pieces of David's. We have it estimated at eight to 12,000, very conservative, and uh, we're very proud of this work. And one of my favorite LA artists, a person I knew quite well, who recently passed away, Venice LA artist, Peter Alexander. Very strong early on, even in the light and space, and then later, doing amazing work. But in the late 70s, 79, 80, he experimented with probably the most ridiculous of all canvases you could think of to do his work. The canvas was black velvet. What a cliche it was to take his ideas, his sort of underwater motifs and put them on black velvet. He did a huge one at a restaurant called Rebecca's in Venice, California, which I was fortunate to be able to uh, sell, which is now in a museum. But this one is from the same period. It's from 1981. And of all of the black velvet works that Peter did, this one really pops off the wall. It's very important very early and incredibly strong. We have other unique works by him in the auction and some really beautiful prints by him. A bit of a uh, anomaly for us because we sort of specialize in California contemporary, but when we get masterworks post-war for the auction, we aggressively take them. And we have one of our, I mean, I just love this piece. It's an outstanding 
composition, a pastel and gouache by the master Juan Miro, done in 1951, that he gifted to his friend Barcy, who worked with Picasso and Miro back in France, and they were all friends. And then this piece went from uh, Borsi, it ended up at a auction, not, excuse me, not an auction, but at a gallery in London, which the client who owns this piece was able to get in 1979. It was in an amazing collection of Jackson Pollock and, and Leger. Anyway, so the piece ended up and then it was bought about 12, 13 years ago by a, a group in Los Angeles. And they submitted it to probably, well, one of the most difficult of, of all of the accreditation uh, places, the estate of Miro, A-D-O-M. And uh, if you send them something and it's not perfect or correct, they tell you ahead of time they will destroy it. But they took this piece, they loved it, they accredited it, and they gave it a certificate. The piece is 100% from uh, Miro, and it's really a strong drawing. Back in uh, 1995, 96, when William Burroughs did his incredible show at LACMA, we were very lucky and we were chosen to be the gallery to show William's incredible shotgun paintings and other paintings at that time. And I partnered up with Track 16 and we did this monumental show and we, Allen Ginsberg was there and William Burroughs was there and Timothy Leary was actually on his deathbed. But we got Timothy to write in our catalog for our exhibition Concrete and Buckshot, and this is the catalog. And this piece was in the exhibition. It's from 1994 and we sold it. Now the collection is uh, deassessing uh, the work, so I was really lucky and able to get it for this auction. It's an original work signed by William Burroughs. Uh, it's not in the catalog, but it was in the exhibition. It's a real piece of American history. Uh, one of the works that I put in from my personal collection to make this auction a little sexier than normal is an original drawing by John Baldessari. He, of course, passed away this last year. When he became more conceptual back in the early 80s, he destroyed most of his figurative work and his more narrative examples. This work survived, it was from a collection, and it was sold originally at the Butterfields. It's here listed in his catalog resume, the fifth or sixth piece, and it's really an amazing drawing by John Baldessari from 1958. One of the works that is the most iconographic and a piece that I have sold at auction and privately, well, many times over the last 30 years, is a piece that was done by Keith Haring, sort of collaborating with Andy Warhol back in 1985-86, and he finished the work printed by Rupert Smith in uh, 86, and then I brought Keith to Los Angeles to do the exhibition called Andy Mouse. We were reviewed in LA Times, The Weekly. It was really quite a show. I did it in collaboration with the great silkscreen artist, Richard Duardo, who passed away, I guess it's been about seven, eight years now. And we did a couple of posters, which I'll show you later. But this was, in my opinion, one of the two strongest works that were done from the suite. And it's in brilliant condition. 
There were only 30 of these made. It's very thick paint done by Rupert Smith, as I mentioned. And it was signed by both Keith and and Andy in uh, 1986, and this will be auctioned on November 7th. Next to it, we have one of the iconic works by Raymond Pettibone from 1989, a piece called Play Ball. We're very lucky in this auction because we have about four original early silk screens and a few hand-painted lithographs from Raymond from the 80s and early 90s. And then we have three original unique works from the 80s that are all incredibly strong. One is from 92, but this one here is from 1987. And it's really a strong, beautiful work by Raymond. Being in LA, of course, we love to show the Chicano artist. We have three original works by Gronk. We have works by Frank Romero. Something we're really proud of is three works by Carlos Amaraz. This is a watercolor. It came from the estate. It was bought from the estate. This piece right here is probably the earliest known piece that I've seen by Carlos. It's probably 83. Uh, excuse me, it's probably 63. And it, he was in class at Otis and he traded this with one of the other art students. And then we have this piece, which is The Struggle of Mankind, which was in the show at LACMA and it's photographed twice in the LACMA uh, catalog. So that's a very strong work, Pastel by Carlos Amaras. We have this incredible, unique, very early work, 1972 by Lynn Falks. It's signed both on the front and the back. It went to a, ironically, sort of a friend of his named Art. So the piece is called Art. It's by Lynn Falks in 1972. Also right above it here, we have nine works by Charles Britton, who's getting a lot of notice right now as one of the great LA photographers. This is a collection of the Venice artists and people that lived in Venice, California back in the 60s. Two of them are vintage, the rest are very early. They all have tags from the Santa Monica Museum. They were there for the seminar show. So back in 1984, John O. Worley did one of the famous murals for the Olympics that were happening at the time. I remember it well. And this is on the Santa Ana Freeway. And it's been there since, but luckily, this is the original drawing, the maquette for the mural. And the mural is being repainted and reconstituted now. And it will be up for the 30th anniversary of the uh, Olympic Games in Los Angeles. And it will be there for the next Olympics. But this is the original drawing. So we're really happy to have this come up with all these other rare and incredible works of art. Speaking of the Semina works, we have a very rare Semina catalog which were sent out. Semina in 1961 by Wallace Berman. So this was the collection of Wallace Berman with original photographs. And it was in a portfolio signed by Wallace Berman. We're very excited about this particular work because of the photographs. And then we've got photographs from the same period by Edmund Teske, Horace Bristol, Larry Clark, and really importantly, really amazing works by Deanne Arbus, that we have three works by Deanne. We also have the uh, Mariko Mori, The Beginning of the End, that was shot 
in Shanghai, China, a panoramic view from 1999. We have other amazing photographies. We just got this uh, O. Winston Link piece that was originally from Peter Fetterman Gallery. We're very proud of this work. So we're going to have a section on just fine art photography. We ask you to go to our website, smauctions.com, and take a look. We'll be online. They'll be bidding live with a tent outside. And of course, you'll be able to bid real time online through a few different of our partners who do real time bidding. So if you go to our website, S mauctions.com you can find out exactly how you can place bids through absentee bidding through phone bidding or through online but preferably it'll be outside with a big tent it's a lot of fun to come to the auction live